Hey guys, in this position world champion Spassky as Black played something fantastic and he won the game just in a few moves. We'll analyze it right now, but let's see how they got here because it's actually pretty instructive. Keep watching. So Larson was playing as white and Spassky was playing as black. In the first move he played B3, which is Nimso Larsen variation, by the way named after the master playing as white in this game. So B3 e5, bishop b2, and then knight goes to c6, protecting the central pawn. In this position, a normal move, or the main line, is e3, wanting to play bishop b5, remove the defender of the center, and put some pressure there on black's central pawns. However, this time, Larsen is going to play c4, also controlling the center over here. The game continues with a knight f6, knight f3, and then e4, getting some space, also getting a tempo by attacking the knight. The knight goes to d4, and then uh, Spassky develops and attacks at the same time. Knight takes e6, d takes e6. Now the bishop is ready to be developed. Then e3, and then this move. Bishop f5. This is a nice move because even when the bishop looks like a little blocked by the central pawn, uh, there is a lot of pressure here on d3. That means that it's not going to be so easy for white to play the move d4. As long as white doesn't play d4, there will be a weakness here and there will be pressure over this half open file. So, bishop f5, and the game continues here with queen c2, and then queen e7, and then bishop goes to e2. Spassky castles queen side, and white is playing here f4, which is probably a little dubious here, because it's creating some weaknesses over uh, g4 also, uh, is on protecting a little e3, and this is going to be a little dangerous against Spassky. Here Spassky is going to play knight g4, which is a very nice move. Now there are some interesting threats in this position. For example, there are ideas here like bishop takes pawn and knight takes pawn, attacking queen, attacking the pawn on g2. And remember the king is still in the center and also white has development problems. Also there are other, a little more aggressive ideas like rook takes d2, capturing later on e3. So this move, this move knight g4 has a lot of poison and a lot of interesting threats over there. After knight g4, what is playing here? g3. And this is stopping some of those ideas. The problem is that now black has a very nice point to break here on h4 and try to open some lines. So Spassky is going to play the strong move h5. This is very well, because if he can open one file over the king side, it's going to be perfect for black since they have the rooks already connected and on the other side white has very big problems with the development and the connection of the rooks so they are not ready to fight for open files at this point and that's why this idea of h5 h4 is going to be a big problem for white so h3 and here Spassky is going to play one of my favorite moves in this game he's going to play the move h4 he's ignoring the threat on the knight on g4 but that would be a very nice compensation. It's actually going to be winning already for black. And the idea here is that after pawn takes knight, he can capture the pawn on g3, and he will have open file, he will have pawn on the 6th rank, and he will have a queen going to h4, creating many problems for this king still in the center of the board. Besides what we said before, uh, white has many development problems. They have like three pieces down because those three pieces are doing nothing right now. So let's see how this continued. Pawn takes knight, as we said, pawn takes pawn, and well, uh, he shouldn't capture because then uh, the rook is going to be too powerful over there after the trade. Uh, he played rook u1. We have a line which is actually very interesting. After rook takes rook, rook takes rook, and now we are threatening things like rook h1 and g2. So something white can try here is bishop f1, and then there is this move, queen h4. Now we are threatening things like g2 discovered. Also we are threatening things like queen h1, we are capturing the pawn over here if the king tries to escape. So there are many ideas in this position. If white tries, they move bishop g2 blocking the pawn and also controlling uh, the square h1. This is going to be winning with a beautiful combination for black. Black can play here. Queen h1. It's losing the queen, but it's getting the king. After bishop takes queen, black is playing rook takes bishop. 
the only move for white is king e2 and then bishop takes g4 and that's checkmate so Larsen doesn't trade he thinks the rook could be a good defender and he tries to keep it on the board and he plays rook g1 and this is the position we had at the beginning of the video here Spassky is going to play a move uh, surprising hard to find a little hard to understand too but it's just stunning it's very strong the move he played here is rook h1 but what is the idea with this? I mean how does he sacrifice the rook on h1 when he's just going to lose it? well um, after rook takes rook and this is what happened in the game now he can play g2 the idea here is that now the pawn instead of the 6 is on the 7th rank so he will play the move queen h4 very soon but also he has many strong ideas with queen h1 protected by the pawn on g2 but besides all those things the main idea is that the king is going to be completely unsafe so once he can get rid of the rook uh, of the white rook there will be sh many checkmate ideas let's see in the game Larson played rook f1 but after rook g1 I want to mention this line queen h4 check king moves queen h1 and this is just winning for black probably checkmate very soon so in the game rook f1 and then well queen h4 but also this is going to be checkmate in all the lines after queen h4 the king moves but then uh, Spassky captures the rook promoting to queen after bishop takes then bishop takes pawn and this is checkmate in two moves in all the lines if the king moves uh, to, e to c1 then queen e1 is going to be checkmate and if the bishop comes uh, to e2 queen h1 is also checkmate so just to see it on the board the king here queen here queen d1 queen takes d1 that's checkmate just highlighting the three most important moments of this game in this position Spassky plays bishop f5 developing but also controlling very well the square d3 avoiding the advance d4 so moves later he's going to play the move h4 in this position sacrificing the knight but getting a huge compensation once he can open lines over the king side and finally at this point he's playing the move rook h1 just stunning and the idea is that he will be able to play g2 opening this line and getting access for the queen also the pawn will be in the seventh rank which is going to be way more dangerous the question for today which was your favorite moment in this game let me know in the comments thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe see you on the next <laughs>